So, we know that the Earth orbits the Sun. The imaginary flat surface that the Earth is on is called the orbital plane. A plane is any imaginary flat surface. The reason that the Earth experiences seasons comes down to the fact that the Earth's axis, the imaginary line running from the North Pole to the South Pole, isn't perpendicular, that is, at right angles to the orbital plane, but is tilted at an angle of 23.4 degrees. This 23.4 degree tilt is the reason that you'll often see most globes tilted at this angle. So, the Earth moves around the Sun in a more or less circular path. It's not exactly a circle, but it's fairly close. But while it moves, it remains tilted at this angle of 23.4 degrees. Now, the key thing here is that the tilt doesn't change, and the direction that the axis points in also doesn't change. When the Earth is here, the axis is aligned like this, and that's the way it will stay. Three months later, it's still tilted in exactly the same way. Another three months later, it's the same. Three months later, it's the same again. And then three months after that, that is a year later, it's back to where it started. The reason that the axis direction stays the same is that the Earth is like a giant spinning top. Now the physics here is a little complicated, but basically when something is spinning, it tends to keep the same orientation. Spinning tops seem to defy gravity, but they don't really. So as the Earth moves around the Sun, it keeps the same orientation. So let's get to the seasons. Seasons are caused by the tilt of the Earth. The tilt of the Earth as it orbits the Sun changes two things. Firstly, throughout the year, the direction from which sunlight hits any particular part of the Earth changes. And secondly, the length of daytime that any particular part of the Earth experiences also changes. Let's look at direction first. In December, the Earth is always in this position. Because of the tilt of the Earth, the southern hemisphere is kind of pointing towards the Sun and receives more direct light from the Sun. And so it gets heated more by the Sun than what the northern hemisphere does. I can set up a camera here just behind the spotlight so that we can see what the Earth looks like in December from the Sun's point of view. The Sun is shining more directly down onto the Southern Hemisphere, and so the Southern Hemisphere is going to get a lot hotter than the Northern Hemisphere. If we imagine a beam of sunlight with all its energy striking the Southern Hemisphere, the energy is concentrated in a small area which heats up a lot. Here, the Southern Hemisphere is experiencing summer. An identical beam of light striking the Northern Hemisphere at the same distance from the equator, hits at an angle such that the energy spreads out over a wider area. That part of the Earth therefore doesn't heat up as much. So in the Northern Hemisphere, it's winter. Another way of looking at it is to consider lots of sunlight hitting the Earth in this position. Most of the sunlight is hitting the Southern Hemisphere. So the Southern Hemisphere is obviously going to be warmer than the Northern Hemisphere at this time of year. Six months later in June, the Earth is moved to the other side of the Sun, but it keeps the same orientation. From the Sun's point of view, as you can see I've placed the camera back behind the spotlight, which is our Sun, the Earth now looks like this, with the Northern Hemisphere facing more towards the Sun. Although obviously the real Earth is continuously rotating. Now the Sun is shining more directly onto the Northern Hemisphere, so the Northern Hemisphere experiences summer, while the Southern Hemisphere experiences winter. Now regions near the equator, which are called tropical regions, are hot all year round because of the more direct angle that the sun strikes those regions. And the poles are always cold, once again because of the angle that sunlight strikes them. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from Shedding Light on the Sun and Earth, Episode 1, Seasons. The Shedding Light on the Sun and Earth series introduces students to the basics of climate science. We examine what causes seasons, why the days are longer in summer than they are in winter, how the movement of the sun across the sky affects the renewable energy industry, and a whole lot more. We begin episode one, Seasons, with a brief explanation of how the seasons affect life on our precious planet, and then explain what causes night and day, and what a year is. We then explain what causes seasons, why it's always hot near the equator and always cold near the poles, and why the poles get only one day a year. Yes, that's right, the poles get only one day a year. 
a six month long day followed by a six month long night. Like all of our programs, Seasons comes with an outstanding student activity sheet. Visit the Liaquas Educational Media website to download the sheet and to find out how you can watch the whole program. You'll also discover all of the other programs in the Shedding Light series. They are revolutionising science education. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.